Yo, what's up guys? So we have the ROG Ally here, just released. And a lot of people are comparing it to the Steam Deck, which I guess is a pretty good comparison because these are the two like devices that everyone's talking about. The Steam Deck has been the the people's champion for a long time. But today I don't really want to talk about the Steam Deck right now. Sorry, Steam Deck. Today we're gonna to compare these two devices. The AOK first of all. Not AOK Zoe. <laughs> the Air Neo 2S. Sorry, I got a lot of devices here. Sorry. The Air Neo 2S versus the ROG Ally. So today we're just gonna dive into it, try to be as quick and as straight to the point as possible. We're gonna be comparing these two handhelds just to decide which one is the one to beat. Everyone knows the Ally is the new hot thing on the market, but the Air Neo 2S is coming with some some good things, I believe, to sort of rival the RG Ally and to be a good competition. And it's, it's better in some ways, but today we're gonna get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the screen. As you can see here, I'm playing a 4K video on both of these devices so we can get a sense of how the screen looks, its colors, and it's contrast and all those things like that. I would have to say that the the resolution is pretty much the same. This is 1200p, so 1920 by 1200. This is 1080p, so that's 1980 by 1080, 1920 by 1080. So the screen resolution is pretty close. It's just 16 by 10, and this is 16 by 9. So you will notice that. The screen is completely full by the video. These black bars are just the bezel of the screen. And the screen has like some black bars here because this is a 16 by nine video. Now, both of these um, devices are at full brightness. So they do get very bright. They are very clear. So as far as the screen clarity and resolution, you're not gonna be disappointed with either of these devices because they're pretty much the same in terms of clarity and resolution. Now, where the ROG Ally wins in, in the screen battle has to do with the refresh rate. Let me just turn the brightness down because it's very bright here. The ROG Ally wins in terms of the refresh rate. This is a 120 hertz um, screen with variable refresh rate. And this is a 60 hertz screen with just normal you know, refresh rate. It's not variable. So... This screen is going to be much more smooth because even if it's not running at the 120 hertz or even 60 hertz, it is able to give you a smooth gameplay because of that variable refresh rate. You're going to experience more screen tearing on the AOK. Why do I keep saying AOK Zoe? <laughs> on the A Neo 2S because it doesn't have a variable refresh rate. Let me just let me just get the AOK Zoe and put it on the side here because obviously. Obviously, it's on my mind. So let me just put it on the side here just so I can stop talking about it. Okay, you happy? Okay, so okay, so it's right here. And you too, so no, I don't have to confuse them anymore. Anyway, so the screen is going to give you more tearing if you're not able to get that locked 60 on the ROG Ally. You're going to be have you're going to have a smoother gameplay experience because that screen is able to vary the refresh rate just so it's not any screen tearing. But as far as the clarity, the colors, you know, you're gonna have a, a pretty much similar experience on both of these devices. And the screens are both seven inches. Now, because of the aspect ratio, some games you're gonna get these black bars because some games don't have 1200p or 16 by 10 as an option. And this game is gonna fill the whole screen, but it kind of evens out because this has much bigger black bars. So if you're gonna get black bars here, you get black bars here. Similar experience, I will say when you get black bars, you actually have less screen real estate overall. So the picture is actually smaller because of that aspect ratio difference, but it's not something that you notice while playing games. A lot of people love the design of the annual 2S because they say that it's a, a bezel-less screen because this is all glass. The entire front is just glass. It doesn't have like a bezel going around it. For me, I don't really mind because I'm looking at the screen and not the bezel. So it never really, you know, offended me. But I will say that the screen does get extra points on the ROG Ally 
just because it has that variable refresh rate it has 120 hertz i know a lot of people may say but triple a games can't run at 120 hertz it doesn't matter because there's like you know less graphical games there's indie games that you can run at 120 hertz you're gonna have a good time because you can actually get 120 hertz and that variable refresh rate that's the real selling feature of this screen not the 120 hertz it's that variable refresh rate that allows you to have less tearing and it allows you to have a much better gaming experience when you're not able to get that lock 60 fps this one you're going to get tearing and you're going to you know experience that frame tearing across the screen also this is a native portrait screen a native landscape screen this is actually a native portrait screen so that does affect things like fsr because in some games the resolution may not register properly that's a whole another story for another day but i will say this screen is the winner between these two devices so let's talk about design now design is very subjective because your design you know whatever you like your preferences in a design is going to be personal so everyone has a different preference i will say that the design on the annual 2s is it's very unique i will say it's not very gamer-esque like the rg ally looks like some type of gaming laptop device something that you would expect from rg the rg ally has all of those design accents and features the annual 2s feels like it was designed you know to be fashionable fashionable i say that with quotations because design is subjective but the, the the color is not my favorite it's hard to pick up on camera but this is sort of like a cream color the camera is sort of adding a little bit of um saturation to it but it is a sort of muted cream color um and it does it's not the worst color in the world but it's not my favorite but anyway it this is the retro edition it's you know similar to like a retro console like um an old nintendo you know, we start to get that cream color showing up. This is sort of reminiscent of that. This is the retro styling. So the ROG Ally is more like gamer-esque. You know, you have that, there's angles. You have, you know, the accents here. On the back, you can see we have more accents. We have the ROG logo in the, in the fan grid. So you have a lot more gamer styling, especially with the shape. It's more angular. It's more sort of like a gaming laptop um, than anything else. I will say the design, you could go either way. A lot of people swear by the Anio 2S design, mostly because of the screen. A lot of people I hear online they talk about the screen and how they love the screen. It doesn't have any bezels. That doesn't really matter to me because at the end of the day, you're going to be looking at the screen and not going to be looking at the bezel um, as you're playing. That doesn't really matter to me. But I will say that the design, you have to pick and choose which one you like better because... They all have their pros and cons. I will say that this is sort of more round. It seems more, I don't know, it seems more natural. It seems more human, if that, if that makes any sense. This one seems more angular. It seems more robotic. It seems more high tech, if you, whatever whatever that means. I'm just talking. This one seems sort of like more natural because it has these curves. And this one is just more angular. So it seems more like, you know, cyberpunk, more like sci-fi because of those angles this one and that one it's like two opposite sides of the spectrum now i want to talk about the ergonomics so when we talk about the design we have to talk about the ergonomics because this one as you can see is more round and that does allow for better ergonomics when you're holding it in your hand so as you're playing it you can see here as i'm holding it it just feels more ergonomic to hold it and it has a bigger grip. You can see the grip here is bigger than the ROG Ally grip. You can see here the grip here. And then the grip here is much smaller. I wish they added more grip to the um, ROG Ally. The grip is very minimal. I would tell you my favorite grip is on these two devices actually. The AOK Zoe. Look at that beef. That, look at that big beefy grip here that's one of my favorite grips and then the steam deck is second because you can see it has this nice big grip here and even with a case 
you can get some added grip and added texture. I'm going to do a video on this case. This is a nice case here, but that's for another day. So the grip on these two devices is not the best, but the Anio 2S does win as far as ergonomics go because it has a bigger grip and it feels better in the hand um, as you're holding it. So the grip, as far as ergonomics go, the grip wins on the Anio 2S but the buttons and button placement actually wins on the ROG Ally. So they're the kind of, you know, trading blues here. The grip feels better on the Indy 2S, but the buttons and the joysticks are in a better place, you know, more comfortable on the ROG Ally. You know, the back buttons, you can reach everything. Now, the buttons on the Indy 2S, it's kind of like you're cramped. If you're on this right joystick, your finger's like way down here. It's kind of cramped, and the buttons are up here. The left joystick does feel good. But the right joystick is like, you either have to play like this and go to the buttons, or you have to cramp up your thumb and then go to the buttons here. And this D-pad is very far from the joystick. So if you go in here, you're cramping up your thumb. Also, and, you know, if you're listening, please stop putting the pause and select buttons down here. This is crazy to get to. Like, you know, your thumb has to really be clawed up here to get to these two buttons. I know you may not touch these buttons a lot, but... I'm just saying that this is a bad position. My finger's up here, put the button here and here. Every other handheld has the pause and select button up the top. You see, if I'm playing, pause, select up the top. Steam Deck. If I'm playing a game, pause and select, start and select up the top. It should be at the top. If I'm playing a game, start, select at the top. It's easy to reach. I don't have to sort of get my finger way down here. I know it probably doesn't come up on camera. But if you have large hands, if you're doing this a lot, pausing the game, your finger, your thumb is like carpal tunnel trying to get down there. So long story short, the handle, the ergonomics in the hand are better on the Any 2S, but the ergonomics of the controls are better on the uh, RNG Ally. So pick it and choose it. If you have smaller hands, you may like the roundness and the grip of the Any 2S. If you have larger hands, you may miss the grip but you may appreciate the button placement on the ROG Ally. Now, as far as the ergonomics go, let's talk about, um, let's just talk about how they, you know, feel to play games, like the quality of the controls. I think the joysticks are better on the Anya 2S. They are whole effect joysticks and they are actually, you know, full size, um, like Xbox size joysticks that are a bit larger than the ROG Ally. You may think that the ROG Ally has like full Xbox size joysticks, but they're actually slightly smaller. Like I have this grip that was designed for an Xbox controller that snaps on perfectly on the any 2S, and that is a little bit loose on the ROG Ally. As you can see, it's, it's loose. It's not like perfectly Xbox size. It's actually slightly smaller than the ANEO 2S. And also this has the whole effect joysticks so you get like no dead zones and you don't have to risk you know down the line having a big drift issue so the joysticks do win on the any 2s and then again we're going back and forth the face buttons win on the rg ally because they are rounded and they have a smooth transition between the buttons it's not something that you know you may think about but if you're playing the game we have to go back and forth between these buttons you don't have to lift your finger up every time to go between them now the any 2s it, the buttons are sort of like they're not rounded they're flat so if you're going between them your finger can kind of get stuck i know it's sort of like a niche issue you know but your finger can get stuck if you're rolling between the buttons not everyone does that some people like you know pick your finger up and push it on each time but some some games you're playing fast pace you may want to roll between those buttons and the air new i mean the air case what are you seeing that the rg ally is better at that because the buttons just the buttons is more comfortable they're larger they're rounded off so the buttons win on the uh, ROG Ally, the joysticks win on the NHS. The D-pad, it's sort of like up in the air, which style you like better. I will say the placement is better for the D-pad on here. I would really like to see, I don't know if, I don't know if Xbox, Microsoft is like telling everybody they can't use this style, but I would love to see the same style as the Xbox controller, the Xbox series controller. You know, it's, it's clicky. I like that click. And I like that distinctive um, sound between each direction. I would love to see 
a d-pad just like the xbox series controller maybe that's not possible but that's just you know my two cents now as far as the the triggers go the i, I think the a neo 2s has better triggers as you can see they are larger they have slightly more travel and they just feel um better in the hands as far as if you're playing a racing game or like a shooting game the trigger just has a little bit more for your finger to to rest on a little bit more travel and the trigger it feels like kind of small in the rg ally so i give the triggers to the i give the triggers to the aneo 2s so the aneo 2s wins the joysticks and the triggers the bumpers are pretty much a tie the bumpers are pretty much a tie um can't complain there so the aneo 2s wins the joysticks and the triggers the rg ally wins the the buttons and the the placement so now let's talk about the ports now the ports is where we're going to see like a big difference between these two devices because the port selection is very different now on the annual 2s you'll see we have two usb ports on the top and one usb c port on the bottom the rng ally we have one usb c port and one xg mobile port now on the anio 2s we have one one usb 4 one usb 3.2 and then another usb 4 on the bottom so you can do like eGPUs. you can connect it uh you pretty much get that full 40 gigabits per second um same as thunderbolt but it's just usb c 4. now the rg ally doesn't have usb 4 it has usb 3.2 or 3.1 and it doesn't support eGPUs through that USB-C port. You need to use the XG mobile port. And that's pretty much <sighs> Asus, ROG. I will not forgive them for not putting USB 4 on this device. Because they could have get, given us the option to have eGPUs with that USB-C port. And then if we want sort of better bandwidth or we want to use their like eGPUs, we can have that option. This is pretty much like an Apple move. This is an Apple move to, to put usb 3.0 on here or 3.2 and to not allow you know each be used like just they could just they could have put usb 4 on here and then they could have also had that for more options but no they said if you want eGPU, you got to get our eGPU. that's kind of disrespectful and i won't ask i won't i won't excuse that that's pretty much that's against the consumer and they know what they was doing they're trying to get you to buy their gpu okay whatever that's business now on the anu 2s you have Three USB-C ports and two of them can be used for eGPU. Two of them can be used for charging. One of them is just for data. But you have three of them. So you can you have your options. You can put it on the top. You can put it on the bottom. You can connect eGPU. You can connect docks. You, you can connect peripherals. And that's good to see. I will, I will say I wish that one of them was a USB-A port. Because then you could connect like a dongle. Like for your Bluetooth. I mean for your you know mouse and keyboard. And then you wouldn't have to have like an adapter for USB C. I just wish one of these was USB A because I think two USB C and one USB A is enough. But you know that's just me. I will say that I really wish that the, the RG Ally had at least one more port, but you know what can you do? What can you do? So the ANEO 2S is going to win as far as ports go because it's more versatile in the fact that you can connect any eGPU and you have three ports for charging. I mean two ports for charging, one port for data the ROG Ally, it's kind of disrespectful that the, you have to use the XG mobile port for eGPUs. Asus. <laughs> Asus. I don't know what you was doing, but you wrong for that. You wrong for that. You know what you was doing. You know what you was doing. Anyway, let's talk about performance. Now, performance on here is very interesting because the chips are pretty much the same on paper, I guess, in the fine print. But they have a different branding. So this is the Z1 Extreme. This is the 7840U. No, I will say a caveat. That we need, I'm, I'm waiting for some drivers for the 7840U on this device. Because it needs a um, a few updates just so the performance can be where it should be. So it may not be a fair comparison, but I'll still show you a few games. Now this is the Z1 Extreme, which is pretty much a rebranded um, 7840U with the AI cores disabled. You know at the chip level so it's a little bit better it's supposed to be better as far as um power consumption now 
with that said, the battery life on both of these is going to be pretty much garbage. I had 100% when I started this video, and I haven't did, had made any cuts up until this point. And as you can see, it's been, this video has been playing for like 20 minutes, and our battery is at 88% on the Anil 2S, and it is at 94% on the ROG Ally. So within this 20 minutes, we've gone down um about six percent this but this is set to 11 watts this is set to 10 watts so this is like the lowest base profile you could tweak it to be lower manually but this is the lowest base profile um 10 watts 11 watts okay so battery life at full wattage you're gonna get like an hour on both of these if you're at like 30 watts you get like an hour of gameplay so now let's get into the performance section I know this is like what everybody should see is the performance of these two devices. So let's get into the performance. Okay, so the first game I want to showcase is Returnal. This game seems to give these devices a a big problem, and it's hard to get good performance on there. You can, but it's like hit or miss. Sometimes you get like 70 FPS, and sometimes you get um, 30. Right now we're kind of in the middle. You're getting about 40 to 45. FPS on these um, two devices here. So this game is really, um, I think it needs to be optimized because performance is really hit or miss. But you can see we're going to um, try to get into some gameplay here. We are around 40 FPS um, on both of these devices. I've seen as high as like 70 on the RG Ally. So I don't know what it really causes it um, at performance mode at 30 watts. Even when I have this, um, you know, plugged in and pulling like 40, 50 watts, sometimes you can only get around, you know, 30 FPS. As you see, we have a huge lag there. And sometimes it's, you know, a good experience. And other times it's just like, uh, I don't know. But as you can see, the performance is very similar on both of these devices. As I get into the game, it's sort of like the performance does get better. As you can see, right now I'm getting about... Oh, sorry. I'm falling into the lava. Anyway, right now I'm getting about 50, 55 FPS, you know, which is all right. And then, you know, we get into it on the annual 2S and we get about, you know, 40, 45 FPS. But when we get into the action, you know, the, the performance does sort of correlate. Um, so, yeah, but it definitely needs to be optimized more. But let's just get into the first level so we can see. How the performance is when we actually get into the game here so we're into the game now you can see our fps goes up to around 50 55 then it drops down to about 40 45 and it's similar to the, the rg ally here as you can see here we're getting around 40 45 and we get up to 50 so the performance is about the same um, in this particular game. This game is like hit or miss. You get some good frames, you get some bad ones, and you have to pretty much take it as it comes. Okay, so here we have Spider-Man Miles Morales, both at 1080p low settings. FSR is set to balanced, and we get pretty good performance on here. I will say they're both at their max. Um, TDP, um, so this is hovering around 30 to 33 watts. This is going to be around 25 to 30 watts, and sometimes a little bit more. So we are getting pretty good FPS here. You can see just sitting here on this building, I'm getting around 84 FPS. I am again slightly better performance on the annual 2S. I'm getting around 90 FPS, so around five to seven FPS better. But we're not just going to sit on a roof in Spider Man, so let's. Let's get out there and start swinging around and see how we do. So we're doing around, I get around 49 was the drop. You know, I'm getting around 45 to 50 FPS here, swinging around. So that's what we will say our average is around 45 to 50 with these settings. You could um drop the settings, maybe set FSR to performance, or you can even drop it to 720p. But I think with the RNG Ally's variable refresh rate, playing it at 1080p, if FSR is at the balanced, it does give you the best sort of um, compromise between performance and, um, 
I guess, graphical fidelity. So it does look good on here. Now playing on the Neo 2S, we can see how our frame rate will drop. It goes down about the same. So we get around 40. I see a drop to 33 just now. So the drop, the dip is larger, but the average is around the same. We get around 40 to 50 FPS, but the drops are larger on the ANEO 2S. Um, but it's not, you know, so much of a difference. I will have to give the slight edge to the RNG Ally just for that variable refresh rate. I don't notice the dips as much, and they do seem to be um, less dips than the ANEO 2S. But you could lower the settings, tweak this to get a more um, steady frame rate and a higher frame rate. But I think this gives us the best in between between performance and um, and clarity. Now I don't want this to this video to go much longer. I'm gonna do a in depth game performance comparison between these two devices once we get the um, updated drivers i'm going to do a full um, performance test between these i'm going to test like 10 different games stay tuned for that i know this video has been way too long it's a lot to really talk about with these two devices and dive it in now in terms of which one to buy if you're in the united states and you have access to the rg li you know, just go for the RG Ally. I know it has a lot of compromises as far as, you know, like ports. I will not, for, like I said, you, get, you hear it here. I will not forgive them for, for not putting USB 4 in here and having a proprietary port there. Um, but that's a story for another day. Um, there are, you have the potential to have better performance on the ANU 2S, but that's going to come down to drivers and optimization. And that has yet to be seen. So once we get the latest drivers, I'm going to come back and do a performance video between these two. But it's safe as if you're in the U.S. and you can get your hands on this. It's safest to just go for the RNG Ally. You're going to get better customer support. Okay, so story about customer support. My right joystick on my first um, RNG Ally stopped working. I walked into a Best Buy and within 15 minutes, I was able to get a whole new RNG Ally. So I left my house with a broken Ally. And 30 minutes later, I had a whole new RG Ally. If this was to break, that's it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I would probably have to send it back, pay about $300, and, and hopefully I get a new one. I don't know. And you, if you're watching this, drop a comment to let us know that some customer support is getting better. If not, it's horrible. Anyway, this is it has the potential to have better performance, but you know you do pay a premium. Um, this is about 700 this is about 900 for the equivalent, um, but you're gonna end up paying more. You have some more features like, you know, more ports and um, flexibility for eGPUs. Some people will say that the screen is better. I think the ergonomics are better. The joysticks are a whole effect, they are better, but it may not be worth that price premium. Anyway, let me know what you wanna see in the comments below. I have more devices coming. I have the A1 Pro coming. Um, a okay, Zoe, and let me know what games you want to see between these two. I will say performance is around the same on these two. I know I showcased some some bad representations as far as performance because we didn't even see like a lock sixty on these. But trust me, I'm gonna come back with some more performance videos, and we're gonna dive into the games and the test. I have about like I said, ten games ready to be tested. Let me know in the comments below what exactly you want to see, and I'm gonna come to you guys with another video you know, talking about the performance specifically between these two devices, but it's really down to personal preference. They both have their pros and cons. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. This video is way too long. If you made it to the end of this, um, comment, comment, um, comment D-pad, because the AOK Zoe has a crazy word D-pad. Comment D-pad if you made it to this point in the video and you will be entered to win a special prize. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.